Oh, I'm uh, Alex Canara. I work with the Thorium Energy Alliance really as a volunteer. Uh, I'm a retired as an engineer and computer network consultant and uh, environmental uh, consultant to different groups, uh, Sierra Club member and so forth. So I'm interested in the thorium power side of things because of the environmental impact that other mechanisms for generating power have and that is negative. And uh, the thorium power concept is very good from an environmental standpoint because what we need from an environmental standpoint is the maximum power per acre of whatever it is we're gonna to dedicate to generating the power. And nuclear power does that. And thorium, basically thorium gives us low waste and high efficiency in the molten salt form. So that all that achieves what we'd like to have is the most power for whatever land we have to dedicate to generating it. Right? So that's, that's my environmental approach uh, and reason for the, my support of the thorium energy cycle. You mentioned uh, you're a member of the Sierra Club. Yeah. The Sierra Club is anti-nuclear. I know. It, they were very, super, very uh, in my opinion, the Sierra Club has been very dumb about how they set policy over the years. Uh, they, in fact, for a while, intentionally had inexpert people on their task forces to establish policies in different areas. Uh, and after Three Mile Island, they became very anti-nuclear. Before that, they did they would, did support nuclear for the same reason I do, maximum power per land consumption. And uh, that's really what they need to get back to again, is to realize that what they did was encourage other fossil fuel consumption and emissions by not supporting nuclear power after Three Mile Island. So in effect, they've been contributing, their policy has contributed to emissions that we really didn't have to create with coal, gas, and oil uh, over the years after Three Mile Island. They really should have supported safer reactor designs, perhaps, but not dismiss nuclear power because it doesn't make any sense. What did you think Bryony about Worthington? Bryony. What did you think of Bryony Worthington's uh, comments about working with the renewables and trying to uh, basically trying to coordinate efforts with uh, oh, you mean the Baroness? Yeah, the Baroness. Oh, yeah. like do you remember what she said about how we need to kind of get on the side with the renewables? Yeah. yeah. And could you move a little bit that way? <laughs> uh, so the Baroness uh, Worthington had had advice for anyone advocating thorium power to actually also get involved with the renewable effort and support that. Uh, I agree, except for a couple of things. One is that you still have to look at the overall efficiency and land use. Uh, and in that sense, we can do with solar power, solar PV or hot water on existing structures very well. Uh, because there's over 2% of the Earth's land surface is covered with human surf, uh, structures, and the surfaces that are exposed to sunlight on those structures can generate more power than you need during peak daytime hours. So all you need for solar is not a solar farm that takes up acreage and maybe uh, disenfranchises species and so forth. You just need to support, as California is now doing, uh, solar installations on local structures, which makes the grid more reliable, more robust, not subject to single failure points and so forth. Uh, for wind power, again, it has all the disadvantages of the farm concept, where you take up land, uh, you may use it for some uses, but it's not the, it, perhaps its original uh, natural state, such as trees and so forth and you lose power continually from transmission distance. So you lose about 10% of power that you generate uh, by having a farm kind of design where you have remote wind farms and then have to transmit the power back to some point that integrates it into the grid. And that's, that's, a, very, that's a very wasteful thing because it's a continual waste. It's all the time. And the other side of wind is it requires backup power to fill in when the wind isn't blowing right. Uh, Denmark, for instance, has to have 300 megawatts of power available at any given 
day that their forecast from the previous day is off by less than a meter per second in terms of wind speed. So that complicates the whole system. So wind is really something that it's subsidized, it's not really very efficient, it's not as efficient as solar, and it will continue to fall behind solar as solar improves in efficiency, which is naturally happening because of all the research on more efficient solar cells and so forth. So my support of renewables goes to local solar for electricity and hot water on existing structures. And then that obviates the need for any new land uh, consumption by the so-called renewable. So that's my position. And then uh, nuclear, particularly thorium molten salt, provides us with the baseload support that we will need regardless. Okay, thanks. Um, Alex, stay there. You're doing good. I can't hear him. So you drive the interview. No, you you can actually drive the interview and I'll just work the camera, okay? Are okay. you good doing that? Okay, so, and, uh, oh, sorry, brain it's part. For, I'm just... Uh, volume on here? Uh, there is no volume. Is it too quiet or too loud? I think it's good. It's not distorted. It's coming through. I'm not getting a ton okay. of the audience. Okay, and that's, that's fine. And so I'll just keep standing here. Is that what you want to do? You keep standing behind yeah. me? So... Okay, you uh, keep going. With, you have to shout to Alex really loud, though. Okay. Uh, my question? Yeah, you okay. shout it to him. What's next? He's going to shout it to you. I, it's I, okay. got, a, I got a question for you. Uh, so what's, what are uh, some of the ways... Uh -oh. <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah. What are some of the ways that Lifter can, A, prevent uh, damages from climate change, and B, mi mitigate damages that are, that are inevitable already? Yeah, please. So, uh, thorium molten salt uh, mitigating climate change, well, it's a bit late to try to do that, but we have to do it. And uh, I would say that what we should be doing now is installing as much of the safe nuclear power we currently have, uh, standard, the standard solid fuel reactors, get the thorium molten salt development supported as the Chinese are doing and others around the world and get those deployed as well. You can always take an existing light water reactor structure when it's decommissioned, gut it and put in a molten salt system inside the same old containment building that the light water reactor used to use. So we can actually do more to mitigate climate change by continuing to roll out what we consider to be the best current re reactor technology while we develop to prototype and to production the lifter technology. That's really the best thing we, we can do at this point. Um, uh, climate change has to be, has to be looked at uh, from the standpoint of what can happen immediately. And one of the things that can happen immediately is a stronger effort on efficiency. And we've already been doing that in the United States and we can do more. So the electric vehicles, just energy efficiency in general, whatever programs we can create to encourage that further than it is already, much as California has already done, uh, we can get a bang for the buck right away uh, in getting rid of emissions. But the other thing we need to do is somehow, and I don't know how you do this, somehow we have to stop exporting fossil fuels. Like the, the pipeline from Canada that will really allows us to simply export petroleum products from the Gulf Coast to other countries. That's something that we really need to not do because that really negates a lot of the efforts we make on the other side of the equation for efficiency, nuclear power, new nuclear power designs, safer nuclear power designs, and so forth. So uh, that's a very difficult thing because that's business and politics together, which is a really tough mix to combat. But if we could do it, that would have a great effect, I think, uh, worldwide. So the Chinese are aware of their problems with emissions and so forth and how much money they spend of GDP just on health ca problems caused by coal burning. And uh, it, whatever we can do to 
mitigate, to prevent unnecessary burning of coal and oil from our side, I think will be helpful in general. We'll stimulate everybody to move toward more efficiency and, and better nuclear power. Okay, cool. Um, oh, can we get a few more? Um, here's what I'd like you to do, is do exactly what I was doing to hold sure. the camera. I'm gonna move okay. another camera around. Are you okay sure. to keep going, Alex? Just one yeah, more. Uh, might as well. What, what else is okay, well, I, I would like to ask a question, then uh, and you do any follow-ups you want. My question is, can you paint a picture of what the world would look like with lifters deployed? Like, what are oh. what do we get out of it? What's the nice, clean future actually look like? Like, try to paint a picture. And yeah. I'm just going to move this camera. Uh, okay. So you guys feel free to start. Don't wait on me. Okay. okay, so the question is, what would the world look like if we actually fully deployed the uh, thorium molten salt reactor, which could have happened about by 1990s, by 2000, if we had followed the plan originally given JFK in 1962 and the development done at Oak Ridge National Labs by the Weinberg Group uh, that was unfortunately no longer funded after the 1972 about. What, what the world would look like would be that uh, old existing de decommissioned plants, nuclear plants, coal plants, and even gas plants would have uh, lifter reactors providing their heat. And therefore, we would have a rel relatively efficient set of power plants on the existing grid without having to spend money to build a lot of new grid connections and so forth. We would have new reactors to meet, to meet the total demand because currently we only have 104, <clears throat> about 100 and some odd gigawatts worth of power from, uh, uh, from nuclear. We would need to at least triple that or quadruple that to about the 700 megawatts that was originally planned in the 1962 report to JFK and that we were supposed to have running by 2000. So if we had 700 to 1000 gigawatts of reactors that were using thorium, uh, we would then have the ability to, to not create waste, nuclear waste in any significant amount. Uh, we could use some non-thorium molten salt reactors to consume existing waste uh, in, in an appropriately secured environmental uh, setup. Uh, and we would be gradually moving ourselves then to total elimination of nuclear waste probably within 100 years. It, the problem is we have so much old fuel waste from existing water reactors lying around that um, it's a resource, but it's a resource that will take time to consume just to generate power from. So that's, the, the, so the future would look, in over, in 100 years, the future would look very good because we would not have existing waste. We would have very little additional waste. We would have very cheap power. We, essentially, we have a fuel that doesn't cost anything significant. Thorium is essentially a waste product of rare earth mining. Uh, so we, we end up with relatively cheap electricity delivered with very efficiently because of the higher temperature of the salt reactor and the high safety because the liquid fuel provides a natural mechanism for automatic shutdown if the reactor overheats or if something, something happens. It would automatically stop, drain itself, and be safe for as long as we needed it to be safe until we wanted to start it again. Uh, that's exactly the way the Oak Ridge Labs uh, molten salt reactor project uh, is now after 43 years. 43 years after shutdown, uh, its salt is still there in the storage tank, underground, very safely managed. So I would say that we would have abundant electricity to the extent that we want to build out the baseload grid. I would say that we would, with solar, uh, power on existing structures, we would not have to build as many reactors as we otherwise would. And so therefore, we, we have a much more efficient economy as far as energy is concerned. And then that's an important thing. And because we had moved to the new technology with Lifter, we would also have a lot of job opportunities, particularly university level uh, 
studies and, and graduates that would have very good jobs designing and operating this kind of technology. And that's very important because that involves everybody, everybody in science really, from chemists to nuclear physicists to mechanical engineers, civil engineers and so forth. So, so the, the benefits of the lifter are outside the, just the energy realm and just the nuclear waste realm. They're, they're into all our educational system. They actually stimula stimulate the, our population to be better educated if the government provides the mechanism for that to occur. And I think that's priceless. That, that's something that you can't really put a price on because the world is more and more competitive every year and we have to start catching up. Uh, and we're not currently doing that. Um, when, when did you first hear about thorium and when did you realize it was, it was great? <laughs> Uh, my first exposure to, to thorium and the molten salt reactor was a talk that Kirk Sorensen gave at Google uh, a couple of years ago. And uh, I was initially skeptical because nuclear power has gotten a bad rap because of various kinds of short, shortfalls, some accidents, that kind of thing. But every, all the questions I had were answered very well and it became clear from the quality of the people advocating it and the, uh, particularly the documents available from the Oak Ridge Labs, the archive, and uh, books like the book by Alvin Weinberg about what he did and what his group did and, and why and so forth. So it, it became clear to me that this is unfortunately a technology that was bypassed for political and uh, perhaps uh, Cold War reasons, but that was just a mistake that should never have happened. All right. Thank you very much.